Ladies and gentlemen, don't tell a soul, but the secret word tonight is clock. C-L-O-C-K. Really? You bet your life! The one, the only... Face is familiar, but I don't place the name. <laughs> oh, that's me, Groucho Marx. <laughs> Thank you. Well, here I am again with $2,000 for one of our couples tonight. George Fenneman, who's face to try and take it away from me? Just before we went on the air, we asked if there were any youngsters present who'd like to get married someday if they found the right partner. And our studio audience selected Valerie Cote and Mike Malouf. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. And if you say the secret word at any time we're talking, I'll pay $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. Uh, Valerie uh, Cote, is that the way you... That's right. It? Where are you from, Valerie? I'm a native. Native of what? <laughs> California. Of California. Huh? And uh, Mike? Mike Malouf? Yes, sir. Where's your hometown, Mike? I'm a native also. Oh, what a coincidence, huh? You're both in the same train. Hmm? How old are you, Mike? I'm 25. And uh, how old are you, Valerie? 19. Tell me, uh, why would you like to get married? Home, children, security. Mm -hmm. You can get that at the bank, you know. Right? <laughs> and, uh, Mike, why would you like to get married? Well, sir, I have no particular reason. <laughs> Well, don't start thinking of any reasons or you'll change your mind. <laughs> By the way, what sort of work do you do, Mike? Well, I'm the chief usher at the Paramount Hollywood Theater. Oh, West Point graduate, huh? <laughs> well, hush my mouth. Say, if you two are married, uh, you could set up housekeeping in the lobby. Huh? <laughs> you could live on popcorn. <laughs> That's in case you want to butter him up. You, know. <laughs> you understand. Oh, yeah. where, do you, where do you work, Valerie? I'm a fountain girl. Would you give me that again, please? I'm a fountain girl. You're a fountain girl? What park do you spout in? Uh... I don't spout. You don't spout? No, I work at Chapman Soda Fountain. Oh, I see. What do you do at your soda fountain? Make Cokes, sodas, shakes. And shakes? Shakes. Would you mind shaking for me now? Mike, let's get back to you. You're still here, I presume. Yes, sir, right? I am. Well, you'll have to wait. There aren't any seats. <laughs> As an usher, just, just what do you do, uh, Mike? Well, sir, I'm in charge of all the ushers. I schedule their days off and make sure that everything runs smoothly when people come into the theater. Well, what are some of the complaints you have against movie customers, Mike? One of our biggest annoyances would be uh, people in the balcony, young kids shooting water all over the audience on the main floor. <laughs> with little water pistols. They're awful hard to find. Yeah, they're hard to find? They're you mean the find. pistols are hard to find? Yes, they hide in their coats when we come to look for them. Uh-huh. Well, you must spend some very interesting moments, huh? <laughs> Looking for concealed water pistols in the bathroom. Huh? <laughs> Do you ever send five people into a row where there's only three seats? Well, that happens occasionally. Mm -hmm. And what happens then? Well, they come out the other end. <laughs> Mike, are you interested in any particular girl? No, I'm not. Are you interested in a girl if she's particular? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that. I mean, I'm no special girl at the moment. Some usher. He doesn't even have a lady in the balcony. Huh? <laughs> now, what's the favorite dish you make at your fountain, Valerie? It's the ice cream banquet. It's the 60 ice cream cents. banquet? Mm-hmm. We have a... Uh, how do you make it? Huh? We have a scoop of chocolate, scoop of vanilla, scoop of strawberry, scoop of coffee, scoop of peach, scoop of banana nut, scoop of lemon stick, fresh peaches, pineapples, strawberries, raspberries, marshmallow, cold fudge... <laughs> Real whipped cream, pecans, almonds, walnuts, and a cherry. And how much extra is the stomach pump? <laughs> <laughs> well, are you fond of soda fountain specials, Mike? Yes, sir, I am. I'm not talking about Valerie here, you know. <laughs> Although she's not a bad dish. I'm, would, you, would you like to go to a movie with him, Valerie? Oh, I think so. And, Mike, would you like to hold hands with a girl like in your theater? Yes, sir. <laughs> You'd like to hold hands with a girl in your theater? Very romantic picture. You holding hands with a girl as you run up and down the aisle. 
<laughs> Valerie, you better have very long arms. <laughs> now, answer yes or no. Will you take this girl to your movie? Yes, sir. Then I now pronounce you double features. <laughs> and may you have many selected short subjects. <laughs> I hope we started something between you two here tonight. And if anything besides a double marshmallow Sunday develops, be sure to let us know. <laughs> now, in just one minute, you're going to work together for $2,000. Right now, pay attention to this. Now then, let's see if you two will get a chance at the $2,000 question. You're going to play your bet your life. Fenneman, bring them up to date on the rules. Each of our three couples has $20. They bet as much of that 20 as they want on each of four questions. The couple that earns the most money gets a chance at the $2,000 question at the end of the show. Our other two couples are in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know what's happening out here. Here we go. Let's see how high you can build your $20. What question category did you select? Movie Gee. stars. Married names of movie stars. Yes. Is that right? All right, here's your first question. How much will you bet? You've got $20. Ten. Ten? Shirley Aga is her married name. What is her screen name? Shirley Temple. Temple. Shirley Temple is right. And they're off to a great start, Groucho. They have $30. How much of your $30 will you bet? Fifteen. Fifteen? What is Esther Gage's screen name? Esther Williams. Esther Williams is correct. <laughs> they're on their way. They have $45. Here's your third question. How much of the 45 are you going to risk? Twenty. Twenty? What is Betty Briskin's screen name? Betty Hutton. Betty Hutton. These fellas too smart. <laughs> They're really on their way. They have $65. No wonder he's a general in that movie theater. Now, here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 65 are you going to try? 50. 50. Okay. What is Jane Waterfield's screen name? Jane Russell. Jane Russell is on the nose. And they wind up with a grand total of $115. Thanks and good luck. Don't run off now. You still have a chance at the big question. Who's next, George? A married man selected from our studio audience and as his partner, a mind reader. They've been off stage, so they don't know the secret word is clock. The gentleman is Mr. Bob Lampert, and the mind reader, Mrs. Roberta Vincent. And here they are. Folks, meet Groucho Marx. And if you say the secret word at any time we're talking... Wait a minute, a mind reader. She probably knows what the secret word is already. <laughs> Having a secret word with a mind reader is like carrying coals to John L. Lewis. <laughs> Roberta, let's make it fair. If your partner says the secret word, I'll pay $100 instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. And you're the partner. Bob uh, Lampert. Uh, you're a mind reader, eh, uh, Roberta? That's right. I'm, I'm surprised you're still speaking to me, then. <laughs> where, where are you from, Roberta? Originally from Kansas City, Missouri. And uh, Mr. Bob Lampert, eh? Lampert? That's right. Where are you from? Santa Ana. What sort of work do you do? I'm in the sporting goods business. What kind of sporting goods? Oh, rackets, fishing tackle. Rackets? Tennis rackets. How long have you been in the racket racket, man? Huh? Oh, about five years. Mm -hmm. How'd you meet your wife, Bob? Well, I uh, met her in her sleep. What do you mean, you uh, met her in your sleep? She was going to school at the time up at San Jose State. And it uh, seems as though she overworks or crams or anything while she's a sleepwalker. Well, this night I happened to be walking down the street and I saw this job in the uh, pink pajamas. <laughs> you saw this job, did you say? <laughs> that was before I was married to her. And did you apply for a job? <laughs> well, later on I did. So, what happened? There she was, and uh, it's about two o'clock in the morning, I guess. said clock, and that's the secret word. That means you just won yourself $100. There it is. Congratulations. Now, where were we when that clock struck? Huh? We were two at the mo in the morning. That's right. You were on the main street, and you uh, were chasing a girl in her pajamas. So what happened? I went up, woke her up, and uh, took her back to the house, and uh, we got acquainted, and I kept coming back. Like a song? Uh <laughs> Roberta, do you have any little profits at home? I have two of them. What does your husband do, Roberta? Well, he's the superintendent of Olds Manufacturing Company. Well, uh, how did he feel marrying a mind reader? He didn't realize he was marrying a mind reader. He didn't know it for a year, and well, just about a year after he was married. Now, how did he find out? Well, my bank account was so large and his was so small, he couldn't just figure it out. 
And uh, do you split the money now? I mean, you... oh, well, he uses all mine and all his, so that's what works. Uh, that's a nice arrangement, huh? <laughs> In addition to your bank account, uh, what does your husband like about you particularly? Oh, I'm a good cook, and I have a very nice disposition. Mm-hmm. You look very amiable. Eh? <laughs> Always cheerful. Eh? Always cheer- very cheerful. Your husband is a very fortunate man. Eh? Not many people that have found a happy medium. Eh? <laughs> How, uh, how would you like to be married to a mind reader, Mr. Lampert? Huh? Mm, might as well be. I can't keep a secret from my wife anyway. <laughs> See, how long have you been married, did you say? Seven years. Seven years. And how old is your wife? Twenty-nine. Do you think your wife wants you to broadcast that little piece of information? <laughs> On CBS, where 99 million people gather every week? <laughs> Hadn't thought of that. <laughs> Roberta, where do you do this mind reading? Well, at the various e-bell clubs and Eastern <clears throat> Stars and schools. Well, I don't go in for mind reading. The keyhole is good enough for me. <laughs> Which do you find the hardest to read, a, a woman's mind or a man's? Oh, a man's mind, much harder. Well, why, oh, why is that? A woman will believe anything you tell her. <laughs> Not when you stagger in at 3 o'clock in the morning, huh? <laughs> Now, suppose I took a $20 bill out of my pants pocket. Could you tell me the serial number on it? Yes, I could. Could you also tell me whose pants I was wearing? <laughs> suppose you run into some schmo whose mind is a complete blank. Uh, what do you do then? Well, no person has a completely blank mind. Have you ever been in a nightclub around 4 in the morning? <laughs> Mr. Lambert, do you agree with what she said? Uh... Well, now let's play your bet your life for $2,000. Run your $20 into more than our other couples, and you get the chance at the big question later. Now, wait a second. Roberta ought to know all the answers. She'd win an award. <laughs> Mr. Lampert, is your wife in the audience? Yes, yes. Uh, would you ask her to come up here and participate in the quiz? Hey. She can be your partner. Come on up, Ellen. Ellen, come on up, will you? <laughs> you see, nobody's safe while we're doing this show. How is it you're not in your pajamas, Ellen? Huh? <laughs> Hello, uh, Mrs. Lampert. Do you think you're going to be of much help to your husband? He's going to need help when I get him home. <laughs> Well, you help him with the answers, and perhaps he'll win enough to buy you a new mink coat. All right, Fenneman's off stage. Remind our listeners how much the first couple won. The usher and the soda fountain girl won $115. Here we go. Let's see how high I can build you $20. What question category did you select? Uh, down on the farm. Down on the farm. You're a farm boy, huh? Here's your first question. How much will you bet? You've got $20. Mm, bet 10 10 What kind of an animal is a Guernsey? It's a cow. <laughs> They're off to a good start. They have $30. Now, remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. How much of your $30 will you bet? $25. What kind of an animal is a shire? S-H-I-R-E. <laughs> it's a goat. No, uh, I'm sorry. It's a horse. It's they now a horse. have $5. Well, Roger. now you've only got $5. Now, here's your third question. How much of the five are you going to try? Shoot the five. Shoot the five. All right. What is a Plymouth Rock? The chicken. The chicken is correct. They're on their way again. They have $10. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the $10 are you going to risk? Shoot the 10. Shoot the 10. What kind of an animal is a Holstein? It's a cow. It's a cow is correct. They wind up with $20, Groucho, and on top of that, they said the secret word, so they got an extra $100. <laughs> Thanks and good luck. Now, in just one minute, our last couple will play you Bet Your Life, and then we know who gets the $2,000 question. Now, something I especially want you to hear, so listen closely. Now, then, we'll soon know who's going to earn the most money and get the chance at the $2,000 question. George, who's ahead so far? The usher and the soda fountain girl are leading with $115. Our final couple has been in a waiting room off stage, so they don't know the secret word is clock. And here they are. A volunteer from the Traveler's Aid Society, Miss Nora Broach, 
And ship's purser Glenwood Hines meet Groucho Marx. Hello, folks, and welcome to You Bet Your Life. If you say the secret word at any time we're talking, I'll pay $100 in cash instantly. It's a common word, something you see every day. Mrs. Uh, Broach? Miss Broach. Miss Broach, uh, that's a good name for a woman on a jewelry show, isn't it? <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Bro- I'll call you Nora, huh? All right. <laughs> You're with the Traveler's Aid, eh? Uh, tell me, just where do you travel? I don't travel. Well, where are you from? Uh... Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan. How'd you get here? <laughs> I took a train. <laughs> Pretty smooth article, isn't you? <laughs> it isn't easy swiping a train, you know. <laughs> those telltale tracks all the time. I <laughs> say, uh, Hines, Glenwood Hines, eh? Sir. You sound like a summer resort. <laughs> you know, you ask somebody, where have you been? He said, I was up to Glenwood Hines for a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> now, Pricer, what do you do on your ship besides snatch places? <laughs> oh, I uh, listen to people's complaints and uh, make out the payroll. Tell me something about your, your uh, boat. Well, uh, it isn't a boat, it's a ship. Wise guy. (laughs) Well, how much do you charge for a bucket of live bait on your ship? Passenger ship. Passenger. Passenger ship. How much do you charge for a bucket of live passengers on your ship? (laughs) Just where does your Moscow go? Uh, All the romantic far-off places like Singapore, Cairo, Bali, Bali? No, uh, we go to Catalina. Romance. Catalina, is that the total length of your voyage from Los Angeles to Catalina? No. Uh, oh, go to where else do you go? Catalina to Los Angeles. <laughs> Man, the lifeboat's made. I struck a rock. Uh, how big is your ship, uh, Glenwood? Oh, it's about 300 feet long, 52 feet in width. What's her capacity? Oh, it's about uh, 1,950 passengers. Is that fully loaded? Well, the ship, not the passengers. <laughs> You're turning into a joke snatcher. You know? <laughs> I was laying by that joke, too. <laughs> now tell me, Moby Dick, uh, how long did... <laughs> Uh, this tramp steamer you're on, how long does it take? How long does it take to make your Catalina trip? Which way? Any way but down, huh? How long to Avalon? It takes about uh, two hours and ten minutes. Sir. And uh, coming back? About two hours. Why, why is it faster coming back? Is it downhill? <laughs> No, uh, it's, uh, we take a different route and it's a little shorter. You take a different route? And it's Why, you shorter. get sick of the scenery on the <laughs> You ever get seasick? No. Has the airplane business, uh, hurt the uh, boat business much going on? Uh, I don't know. Airplane passengers, they get seasick and they come aboard and take the ship ride. Mm-hmm. And vice versa. Mm-hmm. I never took the vice versa. Is that <laughs> That's a much smaller boat, isn't it? <laughs> Now, what do these what do these people do once they reach Catalina? Well, they usually uh, go up to famous bird park, Seal Rock Colony, and they also take the uh, famous glass bottom boat ride. Glass bottom boat. Glass bottom boat. Yes. I've heard of boxes with glass jaws, but never with that. Well, never mind. <laughs> why do why do why do they have a glass bottom? Well, so they can uh, see the marine life. Well, some of those marines have very interesting lives. <laughs> I didn't know you could see them through a glass bottom boat. <laughs> well, let's get back to you, uh, Nora. It's good to see you again. Did you have a nice trip? <laughs> I haven't traveled anywhere. <laughs> well, it's done you a lot of good, anyway. <laughs> As a traveler's aid worker, just what do you do? Uh, oh, we help people who come into the station uh, who are lost. We give them information and direction service. Well, what do you get for all this trouble? That's, uh... <laughs> I don't get paid for it. It's volunteer service. And why do you go to all this trouble if you don't get paid for it? <laughs> Hanging around the station. Well, it's very interesting work, and there's a good deal of satisfaction in helping people. 
Well, that's a wonderful philosophy. Uh, do you have any other job, Nora? Yes, I work at the Los Angeles Credit Managers Association. Well, uh, what are your hours there? Uh, from 8 o'clock in the morning until 4.30 in the afternoon. If I'd only learn to keep my big mouth shut, huh? <laughs> well, Nora, you just said clock, and that's the secret word tonight, so you just made yourself $100. <laughs> I see the sailor is horning in on it. Over here. <laughs> a typical sailor, huh? Now you're going to play your bet your life. If you beat our other two couples, you'll get a crack at the $2,000. I can't tell you how much they won, but George is off stage to remind our listeners. The usher and the soda fountain girl are still ahead with $115. Let's see how high you can build your $20. What question category did you select? Capitals of the world. Capital cities of the world. Here's yes. your first question. How much will you bet? $10. $10. What is the capital city of Spain? Madrid. Madrid is correct. We're off to a good start. They have $30. Remember, you're going for $2,000 tonight. How much of your $30 will you try? Fifteen. Fifteen. What is the capital city of Iraq? I-R-A-Q. Iraq. Take a stab. I'm sorry, it's Baghdad. That was a tough one. They now have $15. All right, you've got $15. Here's your third question. How much of the 15 will you try? Ten. Ten. What is the capital city of the Republic of Israel? Tel Aviv. Tel Aviv is right. Yeah. Well, they're on their way again. They have $25. All right, you've got $25. Here's your last chance to beat the other couples. How much of the 25 are you going to risk? 20. 20. What is the capital city of Greece? Athens. Athens is right. And they wound up with $45, Groucho. And on top of that, they said the secret word, so they got an extra $100. And that means the usher and the soda fountain girl with $115 get the chance at the $2,000 question. And here's the winning couple, Groucho, the usher and the soda fountain girl. Well, back again to try for $2,000, eh? Good luck, and I'll give you 15 seconds to decide on a single answer between you, so talk it over thoroughly and no help in the audience, please. Here it is. The east and the west were finally linked together when a golden spike was driven at Promontory Point, completing the first transcontinental railroad. In what state is Promontory Point? <laughs> Mr. Maloof, what is the answer you two have decided upon? Wyoming. Oh, I, I'm sorry. The correct answer is Utah. Oh! So that means the big question next week will be worth $2,500. Congratulations and thanks to both of you. <laughs> Thank you. Bet Your Life is a John Goodell production, transcribed from Hollywood, directed by Bob Dwan and Bernie Smith. Music by Jerry Fielding.